Welcome in to the 0-2 Broncos breakdown, and I don't even know where to begin. Denver blows a 21-3 lead. The Commanders go on a 32-3 run. A Brandon Johnson, Hail Mary touchdown, gives Denver a pulse at the last moment. A no-call DPI in the end zone takes away any opportunity for overtime. And throughout all of that, it's an absolutely chaotic football game that started great for Denver. And then as Sean Payton said in his, po- in his press conference, a Russell Wilson fumble on a run was the momentum shifter. So let's do our best to try and break down this game together. 35-33 to final. Tip your cap to Sam Howell. The dude was awesome. 299 yards and two touchdowns. Brian Robinson made some really great plays. 87 yards and two touchdowns, especially in the second half. Scary Terry, five grabs, 54 yards and one touchdown. Russell Wilson, 308 yards and three touchdowns and one interception. But that Hail Mary gives him 50 extra yards and an extra touchdown. Javante Williams never really got a whole lot going on the ground. And Marvin Mims with the best half in Broncos history as a receiver. 113 yards and one touchdown off two grabs. But listen, a lot to like unpack here. But ultimately, I just kind of want to get this off. Maybe the Broncos suck, right? I know no one really wants to hear that because it's a sad thing to say out loud, and you can tell me I'm wrong and no, but maybe, and when I say they suck, I mean maybe this team is not as talented as we thought they were. Maybe Mike McGlinchey's not a great right tackle. Maybe Ben Powers is not so much better than Dalton Reisner. He should have gotten way more money in free agency, right? Maybe Brandon Johnson might be better than Cortland Sutton. Like, if you had to pick one receiver, who would you rather have? So, yes, there's a lot to unpack and get through this game. But I think the root core of this is people are going to go, Denver lost to the Commanders? What if the Commanders are just a better football team? Because the Broncos aren't a good team. They're 0-2. They've dropped their first two games at home against teams that finished below 500 last year. You should at least split those games. Instead, they're 0-2, about to go on a two-game stretch on the road. We'll run through some of the stats of the Commanders' offense. I mean, Eric Bieniemy. I don't know what it is, but he is a Broncos killer. Between his time in Kansas City and now his time in Washington, the guy out, out, folk, out, out coached, out foxed, out maneuvered, everything Vance Joseph did. Which kind of brings me to the next point. Vance Joseph, I don't think he's a very good DC there. He wasn't a very good defensive head coach when he was in Denver. It's not like anyone was drafting the Cardinals defense in fantasy football while he was down there. And now he comes back. And this defense looks way worse than it was last year. And there are some personnel changes, but it's the same core, right? It's the same fabric and shell of Simmons, Sertan, Singleton, Jewel, Gregory. Like, you got some new pieces, but no way it's all because Bradley Chubb left. And by the way, here's the Broncos offensive numbers. I know everyone's going to talk about benching Russell Wilson. It ain't happening. I have no reason to believe Jared Stidham is any better. But Russell Wilson pulling, and this is just like karma. I don't know if it's karma, but Russell Wilson pulling a Cam Newton from the Super Bowl on that fumble. When the ball's literally in front of him, and he's pointing to the ground, I'm down. How about you just grab the football, dude? How about you just... Cover your bases. Grab it. That way, in case you weren't down or in case the officials make a bad call, no harm, no foul. You got the ball anyway. Instead, he's like, don't need it. I'm down. Here's the thing, Russ. You weren't down. You weren't down. And you sucked in the second half. Couldn't get anything going through the air. This offense had nothing to show for for majority of the second half. And because of one Hail Mary... All these garbage numbers get ballooned up and people just go box score hunting and go, you want to blame Russ? 
dude had 300 yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, take away 50 yards and a Hail Mary. It's 250 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. And 100 of those yards came in the first quarter. In the next three quarters, he produced shit, nothing. So here's the ultimate question. Do the Broncos suck? Maybe this team is just not a good team, right? Maybe this team isn't as talented as we thought they were. There's Pat Sertan. There's Justin Simmons. Oh, that reminds me. I mean, those are guys I can just abs- I-, I can rely on. And I'm about done counting. Um, the Kareem Jackson ejection, I don't have an issue with that call, but it definitely changed like the trajectory of the game. I know Sean Payton says he doesn't think that was deflating or anything like that. Show of hands, who thinks it did? Because now you're down to three safeties. Simmons, DeLair and Turner yell, and you lost Kareem Jackson. So, like, you lose DeLair and Turner yell. You have East St. Bassey playing safety at some point. What? Like, completely decimated in the secondary because of that. But let me know. Did the Broncos suck? Here are some more stats we'll throw on screen in case you want to burn your eyes. Four for 12 on third down. Nine penalties. Got out-possessed. Yardage is about similar, mostly to a 50-yard Hail Mary at the end of the game, which, listen, if you are looking for someone to blame the loss on that no call, go to a different show. How about you don't blow a 21-3 lead? Don't leave it to the officials on a... 50-50, 50-50, maybe 60-40 call on the last play of the game to dictate whether or not you even get a chance to just win in overtime. No, I am not going to walk out of this going, the officials screw Denver. Come on. Officials never bat a 1,000. We know that every week. Don't put yourself in a position where you have to rely on the officials to be perfect. Everyone knows there is going to be some sort of error you have to factor in. And when you build a 21-3 to lead, you give yourself cushion for maybe one bad call giving the commanders a score. Okay, no problem. You still got a big lead. But when you blow that, you only have yourself to blame. Now we're going to get to more thoughts I have on this game in just a moment. But today's show, Bet US, I don't recommend betting on the Broncos after this one. But if you are brave enough to do so, just do it at chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Broncos125 hooks you up with a 125% deposit bonus. So make all your picks over there. Let's run through some of the receiving stats from this game here. Uh, Terry McLaurin, 50, 54 yards, one touchdown. That one touchdown came over Damari Mathis. I don't know how many minutes into this video I am now, but uh, how about you bench Damari Mathis? Can we all agree? The Damari Mathis show? It's not working. He's not a good starting cornerback. Just isn't. I'd rather have like Michael Ojemudia. So Mathis, he's done. John Bates, 46 yards. Antonio Gibson, 44 yards. As for Denver, that's what I'm talking about. Like Marvin Mims, 113 yards. Brandon Johnson, 66 yards. Cortland Sutton really woke up-ish on the last series. Helped Denver get into Hail Mary range. Five grab, excuse me, for 66 yards. No impact players are receive. Like that's a lie. Marvin Mims, that was the impact play we were waiting for. In my, in my, keys to victory in my preview video, I was like, I need explosive plays, and I need one of the rookies to do something. And I got Jaleel McLaughlin and Marvin Mims scoring touchdowns. So they did their part. They got him out to a twenty-one-three lead. The rest of the team then has to chip in. Can't bank on rookies for four quarters. Now listen. If you have not subscribed to the channel, this is the time to do so because we are going to do live content like this through our watch parties the entire year long, daily videos. So subscribe. Don't miss a thing. Honestly, subscribe. Don't subscribe. I, I'm I, just so dejected after this game. I'm not even going to look at the YouTube analytics for at least 48 hours. One more time, we run through some of the stats. Russ, he was sacked a lot. Six times, right? Mike McGlinchey, you're highly paid, dude. I know you missed all of camp pretty much with a knee injury and you face Max Crosby and then Chase Young and this Washington front four. And that's a tough start. 
But in the NFL, you're not going to get a lot of freebies, right? Next week, you go to Miami, you get to go up against a really good front four for the Dolphins and Vic Bangio. And then after that, you get to go to the Bears, and well, that would be a lot easier. But this offensive line needs to do a better job. I'm not quite sure how to divvy up the blame for sacks because there are plenty of times where Russ just sucks in the pocket. And he's like spinning into tacklers. But the offensive line, like how do you have a false start on the first play when you've got 80-plus yards to go to try and tie the game? How do you have a false start there, 69? Inexcusable. Javante Williams, 12 carries, 44 yards. He's still warming up, you know. I, you haven't, like, the 12, 15-yard long, still waiting for just, I don't know what it is, but I just haven't seen it just quite yet from 33. And then Marvin Mims, shout out to him. He might be this team's best receiver when the year is over. And how big of an overreaction is that? Two grabs, 113 yards, and one touchdown. So one last question we'll ask, and then we'll throw on a super chat we got during our live show. Grade the Broncos. This, this should be fun. I give it a big, fat F. I give it an F. The defense crumbled, the offense flatlined, and you lost after leading by 18 points. Big, fat F. Raging Bull with the last note here on the show. Fire Vance Joseph. Uh, as the YouTubers say, Sound off in the comments. You want to fire like they're not firing Vance Joseph two weeks into the season, but he might not make it after year one. If this defense does not have a massive turnaround, yeah, Vance Joseph has shown me nothing to believe. He is a long-term DC for this team. So I get where you're coming from, dude. No doubt about it. I do. That's it for this post-game show. 35-33. Denver's 0-2. The Broncos in their entire franchise history, have never had a winning season after starting off 0-2. I don't see a reason to believe this is going to be a dramatic turnaround. I know it's doom and gloom, but at this point last year, Denver was 1-1 at least, and they were worse, it looked like. So, they're just going to start, you know, inventing wins? No. I'll sleep on this like everyone. I'll kind of come back tomorrow with more organized thoughts, but that's my instant reaction to this game. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see everyone tomorrow. All right, that's going to do it for us. We're going to sign off. We're going to let you guys go. Enjoy Sunday night football. Enjoy Sunday night. Don't watch the Sunday night football halftime when they run through the highlights of each game. It's just not going to be fun. I bet they're going to do, I wonder which Washington touchdown they would pick. Probably the one that gave them the lead. The 28 to 24 lead. That's got to be the one. All right. Adios to you guys.